Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to do my August TBR, and I do want to give a shout out to the sponsor for today's video, which is going to be Function of Beauty, but more on them in just a moment. I do want to mention that I'm so excited about this TBR video. I recently read a book that kind of inspired me to make this whole TBR. I was kind of in a limbo where I wasn't sure exactly what I've been wanting to read and what I've been into, and then I read The 10,000 Doors of January, and I literally fell in love with it. I've I've been obsessed, but this isn't a wrap-up video. I did just want to mention that that was kind of the inspiration behind a few of these books. I just kind of want something whimsical or something that'll make me think or just... I don't know. Something along those lines is what I've been feeling. There are also a few books that don't really fall into that category. They're more thrillery. And August is my birthday month, as many of you may or may not know, so I actually have so many really fun videos planned out for August, and I actually do plan on doing weekly reading vlogs for all of August. All of August. Because it's my birthday month and I'm really interested in what I'm reading right now, so I figured it would be fun, and I know a lot of you guys have been missing them, so look forward to that, but also look forward to a a ton of other fun content. I had like a brainstorming session the other night and came up with good ideas for once. Crazy, I know. But again, before we get into the actual meat of the video, I do just want to talk about Function of Beauty. But Function of Beauty just makes it really easy to invest in your hair care and to find the best products for your specific hair because they are completely customizable. You actually just fill out a two-minute quiz on their website where you kind of outline your hair goals, your hair type, your preferences. You can even pick the color and the scent of your bottles and you can also add your name onto them. And at the end of the quiz, they give you your own personalized shampoo and conditioner formulas for your hair type. And on top of all that, this formula even is vegan and cruelty-free, and it's free from sulfates, parabens, GMOs, and toxins. Plus, they try and make the process even easier for you by being able to subscribe to their service, and they have subscription plans of one month, three months, or six months, in which you'll be able to get your personalized products delivered straight to your door, which you can also cancel at any time, or if you ever want to, change your formula at any time. Besides giving you a shampoo and conditioner that's personalized for you, they also have a few other products that are completely customizable and you can add on to your order. They have like a leave-in conditioner, a hair serum, and my personal favorite, a hair mask. It is such a lovely hair mask. To talk about my own products, I actually still have the ones from my last video. As you guys know, I was moving and I misplaced these for the longest time and I finally found them again and I'm so happy I did. So I still have the exact same formula, obviously, as in my last video. I want to like strengthen my hair, I want it to be shiny, I want to deep condition it, replenish it, and hydrate it because obviously I do bleach my hair and because of that my hair is very fragile and very dry and I will be continuing to bleach my hair so I definitely need as much moisture as I can suck into it. I again think that my favorite product of everything that they make is their hair mask. It is just so thick, so creamy. I don't use it all the time but I use it about once a week and whenever I do it's just a painless process to like detangle my hair after a shower. It also just adds, you know, a little bit more of that scent. I originally had gotten like the black and pink bottles with the cherry blossom scent. I actually was going over their website and am so intrigued by the mango scent that they have. It just sounds like it would be luscious. And they have a new color that's like a flamingo color that I would love to have my bottles in. So for my next formula, Maybe I'll go for that. So if you guys have been thinking about trying out Function of Beauty for yourself, I do actually have a link that you can click down below where you can get 20% off of your order. So definitely try that out if you've been thinking about it. It really helps out my channel and I hope that it will help you out as well. So again, thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you guys for always being so cool about me taking sponsorships and especially sponsorships that don't have to do with reading. And I appreciate it infinitely. Infin I was gonna say infinitesimally, and I don't know if that's the right word, so we'll just say infinitely. <laughs> but without further ado, let's actually get into the TBR for August. So like I said, after reading 10,000 Doors of January, I've just been really in the mood for something else that's whimsical and just, I don't know, even hard-hitting in some ways. So I kind of kept that in mind when I was planning out my TBR for this month. I do have a couple of books that I feel like hit that a little bit better, but other ones that, you know, we're influenced off that. Let's start with the whimsical ones, obviously. I guess not obviously. Let's just start with the whimsical ones. <laughs> so first up I have Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire. Seanan McGuire is one of my just 
favorite authors to read from. She just has an amazing way of writing and the Wayward Children series is amazing and this is actually one of the first things that I even thought of when I was reading 10,000 Doors of January. I feel like I'm talking about that a lot. I should do a recent reads video soon that way I can actually talk about it there. The reason for that is that there's a lot of like portal fantasy through doors specifically in that book and also in Wayward Children. Not this one specifically but the Wayward Children series follows children who find their way to doors and these doors appear to them because they are kind of a portal to the world that they need or the world that fits their soul perfectly kind of and they fall through it they live in this beautiful different world for an undiscernible amount of time I guess and then they somehow fall back into the real world and most of the time they don't find their way back and the wayward children specifically are kind of at this little boarding house for other children that have been through this this ordeal and I don't specifically know what Come Tumbling Down is about. Oh my god. Oh my god, wait, this one's gonna be so good. <laughs> I'm actually even more excited because it's following, I believe, the twins from Down Among the Sticks and Bones and also the first book from after the events of the first book. So I don't want to spoil anything on it. I'm not going to really talk on it, but that's so exciting. I don't know why I didn't know that before now. And there are a couple more books, I believe, that have come out or that are about to come out. I know that one, at least, that I don't own is already out. And then I believe the following one is either about to come out or just coming out or it came out. I don't know. Editing Brittany, let me know. But I don't own those ones and I am trying to still just kind of make my way through the books that I actually own on my shelves, especially because I'm on a book buying ban. So we'll start with this. The next book that doesn't really fall into the whimsical category, but it kind of does and it's also supposed to be pretty hard hitting or not even hard hitting, but just informative. I don't know. If you guys saw my giant unboxing video, my last video. I'll link it up above if you haven't. I actually unboxed this one in that and that is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. I've been very excited about this book. It was in my most anticipated releases of the year and I've just been obviously anticipating it. So I was so excited that it was actually in the Owl Crate for was it May? It basically is following two sisters who are separated. One who wakes up on this strange deserted island and who doesn't remember anything but does remember that she has a sister that she needs to find. And then the sister who lives in like this really innovative city that is trying to merge like the world with also nature and it's only supposed to really be for other people that are looking to create positive change for the environment but that she has noticed has quickly become a place for rich people who will do anything to survive and she's actually a stem prodigy and genius and she's left looking at this eco city and feeling like she doesn't know whether she wants to use her science for the good of humanity or for the world. And I just think it's going to be so good, so interesting, and look how stunning this cover is. It's so beautiful. I don't know if it's focusing because the lights are bright, but I'm excited. Next up, not I guess exactly whimsical, but a little bit whimsical, is going to be The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is a book that I've actually wanted, or Klune? I thought it was Klein. But this is a book that I've actually wanted to read for a while. I've heard really good things about it. It's basically this social worker who actually has a very strange job of checking up on like foster homes almost, but for magical, fantastical beings. Specifically in this one, he's actually traveling to an orphanage on an island and he has a very dangerous task of discerning whether these very dangerous, six dangerous magical beings are so dangerous that in fact they're gonna bring about the end of days. And he meets Arthur, who's their caretaker, and then he meets like this mishmash of very interesting, supposedly dangerous creatures or beings. Like I believe one of them is supposed to be like the son of the devil, things like that. I've heard amazing things about this. I've heard really positive reviews. So I definitely want to give it a shot myself. And I feel like this month is a good month for it because again, I'm in kind of a very interesting reading mood. Now the next three books are definitely not falling under that whimsical feel. They're definitely more thrillery. 
you'll see. But first up, we have People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. This specifically is following this Instagram mom, and her name is Emmy, and she has like a huge following, and it's really supposed to be a like psychological suspense novel. She is this one version of herself on media, but she's also another version to her husband who knows how much she can really spin the truth, and another version completely to the people that adore her. And it's just, I don't know, I don't know where it's gonna lead, but I do think it'll be very interesting. I always think that any kind of commentary on social media and influencers in general is fun to read about, especially because I guess in some way I'm kind of like a micro-influencer through booktube. And it's weird to see myself in that perspective because reading it is one whole thing where I'm like, wow, yeah, those people. And then every once in a while I'll have that very meta moment where I'm like, I'm kind of like those people. Are not like them, but I'm kind of one of those people, which is just a weird moment, let me tell you. Another kind of thrillery suspense novel is going to be The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan. Now this one specifically is actually following, well, I mean, literally the unraveling of Cassidy Holmes. She was supposed to be a member of the most popular pop group, Sassy Gloss. Yeah sassy gloss and she was sassy cassie and they were the most popular pop group of their time more popular than britney spears and christina aguilera until their sudden implosion in 2007 and years later it's following cassie after she's been discovered dead and she is supposed to have killed herself and the world is reeling from it no one expected it especially not the three remaining members of her pop group and it follows multiple perspectives as they all kind of try and see what they could have done differently or see if they could have even have done anything differently and i just think it's going to be really intriguing i don't think it's going to be very straightforward i feel like it's maybe going to be a little bit of a commentary honestly it gives me slight Daisy Jones and the Six Vibes, which is very exciting because I loved that book. But I also th just think that it's going to be kind of one of those, I'm hoping anyways, stories where even though everyone's kind of trying to see what they could have done differently, they'll ultimately realize that there wasn't really anything they could have done because it wasn't on them. I don't know, I really would hope it's something like that. Or <laughs> my other hope for the story is that it actually is a secret murder and that they thought she had killed herself, but instead it was murder. That's my, my highest hope, I just don't think it's gonna be that. <laughs> and the last book on this list, this one isn't necessarily a thriller, but it is, I believe, going to be a thinker, and again, that's kind of what I'm in the mood for right now. I guess thinker is the right word for it, like books that are making me think. Who would have thought? That's Imposter Syndrome by Kathy Wang. The moment I got this in a book of the month box, I was actually really stupidly intrigued by it. And the other day when I was sitting down trying to decide what I would want to read next, my eyes snagged on it and I was like, yeah, oh my god, that. So specifically, this is actually following Julia because she is a computer science graduate that gets recruited by one of the largest Russian intelligence agencies to go to America. And she actually ends up as a COO of one of America's most influential tech companies called Tangerine, and she's supposed to kind of funnel information from this tech company back to her actual intelligence agency in Russia, but they start to ask for more and she gets really uncomfortable with it, but it's also following Alice, who's a first-generation Chinese-American graduate who also ends up working for this fabulous tech company called Tangerine, but she's just one of the lowly little peasants in the job. She doesn't have a big position or anything, and she's totally okay with that, but then one day she is doing a routine service check and notices some strange stuff going on in the server and she's kind of left with the information trying to decide what it is that she should do with it and obviously her and Julia actually end up kind of getting a closer and closer relationship and Julia starts to wonder if what she's doing is really right because she really feels as though she earned her position and she doesn't know if what she's doing should still be going back to the Russian intelligence agency. I'm assuming it probably has something to do with her getting closer also to Alice. I don't know. From what I remember, this is also supposed to be kind of like a really in-depth look into Silicon Valley and like the gears that turn it and just things like that. I just feel like it's gonna be fun. It's a good mix of romance and tech. I don't know. You know, it's funny when I talk about books that I haven't read yet because I'm really wholeheartedly going off of the summary and what I've heard people say about it. So we have no idea if that's what these books are really about or if, or if I will have completely differing 
<laughs> opinions once I've read it, but it's still fun to do. At least I think so. And those are the books that I plan on reading this month. I feel like there's a few more on my list, but if I end up reading them, I'll let you know in a wrap-up video, you know? I just don't, I just don't, I feel like these ones are a good basis. This is what I think I'm gonna read this month, and we'll be able to see because I'm actually doing weekly reading vlogs, which is just, you know, a whole other level and layer of excitement. <laughs> so stay tuned for August. Obviously, I'm really excited about it. Normally, I'm not incredibly... Okay, that's a lie. I'm always really excited for my birthday month, and then I'm not actually normally that excited on my actual birthday. For no good reason. I just feel like it's just whatever, and especially I keep getting older, and I think it's really rude. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with getting older, but I just like, I'm not used to this age yet. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to go to the next one, you know? It just, it's not fair. So <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys are planning to read for August. If you have uh, any good suggestions for me on the whimsical front, because I would love to hear it if you do. And besides that, thank you again to Function of Beauty for sponsoring. If you guys were interested, once again, the link is down below for you guys to follow and get 20% off of your first order. And without further ado, this video is officially coming to an end. So I will miss you guys until my next one. That was cheesy. That was corny. Whatever. I will see you in my next one, hopefully. Maybe. Perhaps. Probably. I don't know. See you then. Bye! <laughs> I feel like I might have forgotten something. Thank you.